Why are you here? Are you here because you want to live your life with passion? Yeah. Because you want to live your life with purpose? Yeah. Because you want to love better? Yeah. Because you want to treat your genes? Yeah. Because you want to have amazing relationships? Yeah. Because you want to have joy in your life? Yeah. Well, how are you going to do that if you have FLC syndrome? You know what that is? No. That's when you feel like crap. So many of you have this problem. And all I want to talk to you about is why our toxic load in our environment, our toxic food, environmental toxins, and all the other things that are poisoning our body are making us feel like crap. So how many of you have symptoms of FLC syndrome? For example, do you have sinus congestions, post-nasal drip, asthma? Do you have headaches? Do you have trouble concentrating, focusing, brain fog? Do you have joint pain, muscle aches? Do you have stomach aches, gas, bloating, reflux, heartburn, bad smelling stools? Do you have bad breath? Do you have all these problems, or any of these problems? Raise your hand. Oh boy, okay. Well, we have developed a questionnaire, which you can download at drhyman.com slash toxic where you can find out just how toxic you are. Now, if your score is less than 10 or 20, that's okay. If it's over 50, that's not good. And if it's over 100, that means you have a more serious form of FLC syndrome. It's called FLS, which means you feel like shit. And it's a serious problem that affects millions and millions of Americans. And we think we have to live with these symptoms. We don't know that there's a way to be free of this suffering. Now, the problem is it's not just the toxins that make us feel like crap. There's ones that are actually causing serious disease. This book by Dr. Joe Pizzorno is called The Toxin Solution. And if you want to go deep into this area, you can look at this book and find out not only how it makes you have FLC syndrome, but how it causes a whole range of diseases which we don't ascribe to toxins. I went to medical school, we don't learn anything about toxins. Here's a graph that shows the correlation between the environmental toxins that we have. There's 80,000 new chemicals in our world since the turn of the last century. 20% of them have been tested, most of them have not. And we're finding out day after day just how poisonous they are. And this is linked to diabetes. But it's not just diabetes, it's neurological conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and dementia and depression and autism and ADD. It's metabolic issues like obesity and type 2 diabetes. They're called obesogens. These chemicals make you obese. Even if you're not eating the wrong food, they can make you obese. They also are linked to cancers. They're linked to autoimmune diseases and a whole host of other issues. So it's not just about the short term. It's really about the long term. Now we have been exposed to 287 known toxins that are in the umbilical cord blood. That means before the baby even takes his first breath, it has 287 toxins in its umbilical cord blood. Just think about that. Heavy metals, mercury, lead, arsenic, flame retardants, PCBs, dioxins, all sorts of petrochemical toxins, pesticides, DDT, coming from the environment that goes through the mother and the baby. The good news is that we can do something about it. The bad news is we live in a toxic environment. In fact, if we were food, we would not be safe to eat. Now, the IQ issue is quite serious. If you look at the issues around IQ, the environmental chemicals that kids are exposed to have caused the children in this country to lose 41 million IQ points. Just think about that for a minute. Why do we have one in six kids in America who has some type of neurodevelopmental issue like ADD, autism, Asperger's, depression, behavioral issues? I learned this the hard way. Because I lived in China for a year and I was stupid enough to take my air filter in my hotel room and clean it out every day and breathe in the concentrated black soot. Now, if you've ever been to China or Beijing, you can know that you can't see the next building across the street on a sunny day because the pollution is so thick and people wear gas masks. This was me 20 years ago after I came back from China and you can see how awful I looked. And it's not just the mustache. I went from riding my bike 100 miles a day to not being able to walk up the stairs. I went from being able to remember 30 patients in a day, dictate all their charts without any notes, perfectly remember exactly everything, to not being able to know where I was at the end of a sentence after I started the sentence. It was like I had ADD, dementia, and depression all at the same time. My entire body broke down. It wasn't just my brain. And this is me now 
after 20 years, I learned how to detoxify myself and heal from environmental toxins that were really taking me down. And many of us don't ascribe our symptoms or issues to environmental toxins. So how do toxins actually hurt us? They hurt us by poisoning our enzymes, which regulate every chemical reaction. They displace minerals and nutrients in our body. They interfere with hormones, causing infertility, causing all sorts of endocrine disruptions and hormonal issues, causing testosterone to become dysfunctional, infertility and more. They damage our organs. They damage our DNA, which is something we need to function every day. And they modify how our genes are expressed. They damage our cell membranes. And worse, the more toxins we have, the harder it is to detoxify. So it's a self-perpetuating cycle. The good news is we can do something about it, and we know how to do that. Now, let's talk about the major toxins. And I'm going to give you the bad stuff, but I'm also going to give you the good stuff of what to do to fix this. So don't be too depressed. The major source of toxins that we're all exposed to every day are the pounds and pounds of food we consume every single day. And most of us consume processed food. Stuff made by factories, industrial products. Now, I was uh, in Haiti after the earthquake, and after three days of working in this hospital, there was no food. I had a few clip bars I brought with me, a little water. We were starving, and the, the 82nd Airborne showed up, and they brought these things called MREs, or Meals Ready to Eat. And I went up to the soldier and I said, can I please have one? And I was, you know, was under a lot of stress, seeing horrible things that you can't imagine. And I said, can I have the chicken and dumplings? Because it sounded like a comforting food. So I went back in the back of the OR, I ripped open the packet, and I let it heat with this thermogenic reaction they have so you don't need a stove. And while it's heating, I started to read the label. There were about 500 ingredients. And I kept looking for the chicken. But there was no chicken. It was a food-like substance. And I think most of what Americans consume today are food-like substances. The worst is sugar, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but fast food, processed food, these foods are perpetuating disease, poverty, social injustice, far more than we imagine. Sugar is probably the worst of these. We consume about 152 pounds of sugar every single year per person, about 142 pounds of flour. Now, I know I'm not eating that much, some of you must be eating a lot more out there, right? And, and the sugar is powerful because it's highly addictive, and it drives our behavior in ways that are based on our evolution. We're designed to crave sugar, and we're designed, when we actually get sugar or something sweet or starchy, to store it as belly fat. And that leads to a whole set of consequences of disordered behavior, cravings, hunger, that we blame on ourselves. So I would put to you that if you're overweight, it's not your fault. It's because the industry has designed food to become highly addictive. I once had dinner with the vice chairman of Pepsi. You can imagine how that went. And I said to him, you know, do you really think that 1,800 calories of Pepsi is the same as 800 calories of broccoli or almonds? He said, absolutely. He said, Mark, by the way, why don't you come to our lab in Westchester where we've harvested the taste buds of humans and we can test chemicals on them to see which maximally stimulates the taste buds and get people to eat more of it. And I'm like, do you know who I am? Have you heard of social media? <laughs> so now sugar is also one of the things that drives one of the biggest problems in America today, which is fatty liver. It literally poisons your liver. It's the number one cause of liver failure and liver transplants. There are teenagers and people in their 20s who are needing, needing liver transplants from consuming too much soda. Now, Joe talked about the movie What the Health, and I think there were many good things in that movie, especially talking about the connections between industry and professional associations that are giving it bad advice, and the mistreatment of animals, and the way in which we raise factory farm animals. All that is terrible. But they got some facts wrong. And they said that sugar and carbohydrates have no link to diabetes. That is just bad science. I just want you to be careful when you watch that movie to understand that some of the science in there is a bit mangled. Now, this looks like the stadium food that they were serving up there, right? <laughs> now, I know that's not Tony's fault. I know he wants good food for you, but sometimes there's contracts and regulations that are bad. But this is what America is eating today. This is the other problem, bad oils. The oils we eat are refined. We never consumed these oils 100 years ago, and our government is telling us to eat lots of these, which doesn't make sense to me. These are highly adulterated, they're, they're, they're extracted with hexane, they're deodorized, they're heat processed, and they're highly toxic. So any oils that you want to eat are natural fats, and we'll talk about that in a minute. In fact, when, when you look at the data on these oils, the consumption of these has gone up a thousand fold. That's 100,000% since 1900, and it's linked to violence, 
and homicide and suicide. So many of our social ills are driven by this. I had a patient once who was a prisoner, not even a patient. He was someone who read my book in prison and followed the guidelines and said, you know, thank you, Dr. Hyman, because I was violent criminal my whole life. And I didn't realize it was because of food I was eating. And I changed my diet. Somehow he did in the prison, I have no idea. And he was able to transform his life and, and actually overcome his entire life of violence and bad behavior by changing his diet. Trans fat, you've probably heard of, hydrogenated fat. It's actually the fat that our government has finally ruled after it's been on the market for decades, since 1911 with Crisco, to get it out of the food supply. It's called non grass means it's not recognized as safe. And yet, if you go to your grocery store, it's still in everything. Why? Because the government gives these food companies years and years to get it out, so be careful of that. So you want to eat good fats, like Dave was talking about. Fat is the fuel that our body loves. It's the fat that your mitochondria loves. It's the fat that helps you lose weight. It, it, the whole idea that all calories are the same, that if you eat fat, you're going to get fat. It's just a wrong idea. I wrote a book called Eat Fat, Get Thin, where I break down the science of this. But fat actually speeds up your metabolism. It helps you lose weight. It cuts cravings. It releases fat from your fat cells, where sugar and starch does the opposite. It makes you store fat. It makes you hungry, and it slows down your metabolism. So things like the omega-3 fats from fish, nuts and seeds, coconut oil, coconut fat, olive oil, avocados, these are all awesome fats for you to be consuming, and they're from natural whole foods. This is frightening. I don't know if you ever saw it. The article in the New York Times a few weeks ago about macaroni and cheese. Now, I grew up on this stuff. Any of you? Yeah, right? Crab macaroni and cheese was stuff I, I knew how to make. I could cook as a kid because I could make crab macaroni and cheese. And it's full of phthalates. Phthalates is a plastic that's been linked to low IQ in kids. It's been linked to violence. It's been linked to lower testosterone, infertility, and a whole host of other diseases. And it's one of the most toxic things in our environment. It's in plastics. It's in saran wrap. It's in... Uh, water bottles and it's in macaroni and cheese. So we don't know what we're eating when we eat this processed food. They used to have horrible uh, ingredients that they took out in Europe. In Europe, they don't let these companies put these ingredients in the food. They make it make real food. Bisphenol A, this is in credit card receipts. It's in ATM receipts. It's in cans. It's in bottles. And it's a powerful endocrine disruptor. It disrupts your hormones and it leads to obesity and fertility, all kinds of genital deformities and all sorts of things that are something we can avoid. So we can avoid these things. We, don't, we shouldn't eat anything in a package or box or a can if we can help it. Aspartame. There's no free lunch here. Aspartame and all the diet sweeteners have been shown to increase obesity. There was a huge study that came out, 37 studies reviewed, 400,000 people, 10 years. It's linked to heart attacks, to strokes, to diabetes and obesity. So don't think you can get your sugar that way. And if people are negotiating, well, what about this, what about that? It means you're a sugar addict, so just be aware of that. Also chemicals, we're exposed to enormous amounts of chemicals. Two and a half pounds of these artificial colors and ingredients are put in our food every single year, and we eat them. We eat them, and this has enormous effect. They did one study with little kids where they, where they gave them a red dye juice, and they gave them a naturally red juice, and the kids who had the artificially dyed juice were hyperactive and had behavior problems and couldn't focus in functional school. So how are we treating our kids with this stuff? Of course, then there's other stuff that's put in our food. Monsanto, the ones who brought you uh, PCBs, the oxen, and Agent Orange, are now the biggest supporters of our, our agriculture and have produced something called Roundup. Now Roundup, or glyphosate, has now been linked to cancer, it's disrupts your gut flora, and has many, many other health consequences. And it's used not just on soybeans, it's used on wheat. When they harvest wheat in order to get the leaves and everything off the wheat plant to make it easier, they harvest it, and right before they harvest it, they spray it with Roundup. So you're, anytime you eat a wheat product that's not organically raised, you're getting high levels of glyphosate. Gluten is another issue for many people. Many people are sensitive to gluten, and this causes brain dysfunction. It causes headaches, it causes behavioral issues, it causes Things like ADD, autism, schizophrenia, even causes white matter change in the brain that can lead to dementia. And we are consuming enormous amounts of this, 142 pounds a year, which is almost a half a pound a day per person. And this is toxic when eaten in high doses. There's also something else you should know about that you probably never heard of, calcium propionate. That's a chemical that's in bread to preserve it. All commercially raised bread products have this in it. And this has been linked to autism, and behavioral issues, and many, many other things. It's toxic to the brain. They can take this chemical and put it in rats, and they take normal rats, and they make them autistic simply by putting it in their, in their system. And what about this? 
you want your farmers to wear gas masks? Is that a good thing? I mean, farming is the most dangerous occupation in America. It, and the highest rate of Parkinson's is in farmers. These pesticides have enormous effects. And it's not just the effect of one thing. So all these things I'm talking to you about, they're avoidable. And all these things that I'm talking to you about are actually synergistic. They work together to create dynamic changes that lead to all sorts of diseases. And then they're synergistic. So it's not just the effect of one and one and one. It's one and one is ten. This is a guide from the Environmental Working Group where I'm on the board which classifies fruits and vegetables according to the dirty dozen list. So those are the ones you never want to eat if they're not organic. And then there's the clean 15, which is okay to eat if you uh, don't want to spend the money on organic, you can get away with not eating those organic. So you can look at their website, ewg.org, and get information about this. So we need to stop these things because they're real and they have an impact and we have control over it. We have to take control over the things that we want for our lives. Now, there was a little boy I saw not too long ago whose school was right next to a cement plant, which belches out lead and mercury and heavy metals and many other toxins. And at the end of the day, all the cars in the parking lot were covered with this dust from the cement factory. This kid had severe behavioral problems, violence, ADD, couldn't focus, getting kicked out of school all the time. His mother brought him to me and I found he had enormously high levels of metals, mercury and lead in his system. And we were able to treat him, get those out, and his behavior problems went away. Dave mentioned Wi-Fi and EMS. E EMS are significant, and, and I won't spend too much time on them, but we also try to minimize them. If you're not uh, sure if this is true, just check your phone. Go to the About in your phone menu and read down below at the bottom in the fine print where it says RF, and it says, never hold this near your head. It's dangerous. It will kill you. So check your phones. Not right now. <laughs> so, okay, so you've got all this stuff you're exposed to. Now you're probably depressed. What do you do? Well, the good news is there's a new drug that's been found to completely deal with this. This drug can actually change your gene expression, can optimize tens of thousands of genes, can balance your hormones, can improve inflammation, balances your gut microbiome, it helps your body upregulate detoxification, it works faster and better and is cheaper than any drug on the market and it's available to almost everyone on the planet. You know what it is? It's food. Yeah. Woo! Now, I'm, I'm writing a book it's coming out next, next March called Food. Uh, I wanted to call it What the Fuck Should I Eat? But no one wants to call it that. <laughs> Which is what we all want to know. What should we be eating, right? Yeah. You hear this advice, that advice, so confusing. I go through all of it, including the environmental issues Thank and you. give you a breakdown of what you should eat and what you should eat. So food has the power to upregulate all these things in your body. It has the power to help your body heal, repair, and detoxify. So your liver needs help. It works by using the food you eat to regulate these pathways, to increase the excretion of these toxins, and to help your body repair and heal. And there's a few foods that are specifically very powerful in doing this. And they all help to increase something called glutathione. You've probably never heard of this, but it's probably the most important molecule in your body. And when it goes down, you get sick. And the good news is the things that I'm going to tell you today are going to help you increase the level of this chemical, which is the most powerful detoxifier, the most powerful antioxidant, and the most powerful anti-inflammatory compound on the planet. And it comes from eating food. So all the dark green leafy vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli, all these have an enormous impact on your glutathione levels. Also, garlic and onions. Not so bad, right? Not so bad. You get to eat this stuff, tastes good, you feel good. Spices, Dave talked about spices. So this is just what we need to be eating. We don't need to be eating food-like substance. We don't need to be eating industrial science factory-made weird Franken products, right? We need to be eating food. And it matters, it really matters, because everything you do, every minute of the day, everything you put in your mouth has an impact. Not 10 years from now, but right now, and how you feel, how your brain function works, how your energy is, how your body's functioning, and that determines the quality of your life. So the quality of the food you eat determines the quality of your life and your ability to wake up and have energy and do the things you want to do, because if you don't take care of this, if you don't take care of this, you can't do anything. You're just gonna wanna lay around and watch TV. All right. Amen to that, right? So, green tea also is great for detoxification, has very powerful enzymes that do that. 
Try to eat organic food when you can. You can't always do it, you do your best. But these accumulate in us over time, and we now can collect the urine of patients, and I see this in my patients all the time. Think of your grocery store as your pharmacy. I say it should be F-A-R-M-A-C-Y. The grocery store is where you get your drugs. And when I go shopping, I go, oh, I want this drug, I want that drug. I know it's been this and this, this in my body. And I use those medicines. Food is medicine. It's not just, it's not just calories. Mm -hmm. It's information. It's instructions. It actually takes care of doing the things that your body needs best. And if you don't put the right information in, you cannot function. All right. idea for people. People just think, oh, I'm getting my energy, it doesn't really matter where I get it from. Oh, I eat too much, I'll get fat. No. You have to understand that food is instructions. It's like code. It's regulating your body with every single bite. It upregulates or downregulates. Everything is going on in your body. So if you, you know, listen to Dave and what he's talking about, he's talking about how do you hack your brain? How do you hack your body? How do you hack your mitochondria? We have the science and technology and information to do that, and all you have to do is start to practice on yourself. You don't have to listen to me. I, your body is the best doctor in the room. It tells you what you need and what you don't. The problem is most of us don't connect the dots and most of us don't listen, right? So the other issue is factory farm animals. These are terrible for the environment and the planet, they increase climate change, they increase methane, which produces enormous amounts of of uh, changes in the climate and affect atmosphere more than carbon dioxide. It, I mean, it also it also uh, is scary because these these factory farm animals are fed hormones. They implant pellets, estrogen pellets, into the male steers to make them get fat before market. They give them antibiotics not just to prevent disease, but because the antibiotics change the bacteria in their gut that lead to them to gain weight. They also eat gross ground-up animal products. They, they're filled with pesticide-containing grains that they consume that are full of Roundup and other things. And also they feed them candy. They're huge candy factories that make candy that's expired. They give it to the farmers to feed it to the cows. Not to mention how inhumanely they're treated. Not to mention uh, the runoff from these that go into the rivers and lakes that actually destroy our waterways and create dead zones the size of New Jersey in the Gulf of Mexico that, that destroy our environment. These have to go. On the other hand, on the other hand, you know, there's research that shows that grass-fed meat has higher levels of beneficial fats. It has something called CLA, which prevents cancer and stimulates your metabolism. It increases antioxidant enzymes. It's higher in minerals and it's safer for the environment because when you do something called restorative grazing, which is something that Sky Allen Savory figured out, you actually mimic the natural patterns of grazing from ancient herds. For example, like the buffalo, you can restore grasslands. Most of the earth is turning to desert. We're losing an acre every minute to, to desert in this world because of the way we, we raise animals. But we actually can use restorative grazing and actually sequester as much carbon if we did this at scale it would take us back to the free industrial age of climate change. So you don't have to eat meat, but if you do, it should be grass-fed. And I always think of meat as a condom meat, not the main course. It's a side dish, right? Condom meat, get that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you want to have good quality proteins, grass-fed meat, sustainably raised fish, smaller fish, sustainably harvest, not these factory farmed fish, which are also having many of the same problems. Pasture-raised chicken beans, nuts and seeds, all these are great sources of protein that you can use to help optimize your biology. And what about fish? You probably heard Tony talk, talking to you about the fact that he had the highest level of mercury of anybody on the planet. It's probably true. I've been doing this for 20 years. The highest level I'd seen before was 55. His was like 155. And it was from eating swordfish and tuna. So these don't naturally have them in there, but when we uh, have industrialization, we actually release from these coal plants, from the cement plants, from the power plants, huge amounts of mercury and lead. And they go into the air, and then they rain down on our lands, they rain down on the oceans, and they lead to the fish accumulating mercury. So the big fish, the swordfish, the tuna, the halibut, the Chilean sea bass, these fish are full of mercury, and it doesn't take much to get toxic. Sushi is the big problem. I had a patient who had enormous amounts of mercury in him. He was seven years old, he was the CEO of a large company. He couldn't function, he had 
early dementia, he was depressed, his family didn't want to be around him anymore, his behavior changed, and they brought him to me as a last resort. And I identified the fact that he was from Pittsburgh where these steel plants belch out huge amounts of coal and they rain down on the city. And they use coal ash to cover the farmland. They use coal ash to cover the streets in the winter from ice. He also had a mouthful of fillings. And I found his mercury level was from a challenge test 350, which is the highest I'd ever seen. And so I took him and I gently detoxified him. I got rid of the fish in his diet. I helped his body detoxify. I got rid of the amalgams in his mouth. I boosted all of his other systems, helped build his glutathione. And he recovered. And he was able to go back to work and be with his family. His personality changed. So many of the things we think are reversible are not if we understand what to do. I had another patient who had Parkinson's and she also had a mouthful of fillings. We took them out and she recovered. I had another patient with Parkinson's who grew up in the Bronx and she had cockroaches and rats running all over her and she was terrified of pests and she went to the suburbs of Long Island. She got the exterminator to come every month inside and outside for decades. She also had chloridane, which is a banned pesticide, in her garage for them to use. And she developed Parkinson's at 50 years old. Now these things we can do something about, we can change. Remember the Mad Hatter, why was he mad? Because they, they get the hats and they stiffen the felt with mercury. There's a great guy called the EWG, Good Seafood Guy, where you can use your intelligence to select the fish that are good for you. I call these the small fish, smash fish, salmon, sardines, herring, mackerel, anchovies, and there's some others that are good too, but you can look at these guys from the Rival Working Group and others. Dentists are increasingly understanding that mercury is not safe. In many other countries besides America, these are banned. And if your dentist is not using the safe technique to remove them, you're gonna get in trouble. If he's not wearing a gas mask, if he's not using the special techniques, you can get in trouble. Also, our household cleaners, also full of chemicals. These are easily avoidable, and they, again, they cause problems. There's all sorts of safe products. The Environmental Working Group also has a guide on safe products. What about what you put on your skin? I, I confiscated lipstick from China from my wife because it's full of lead. But we also put all these parabens and other toxic chemicals that are hormone disruptors that affect us, and we're putting this on every day. So my rule is if you wouldn't eat it, you shouldn't put it on your skin. Right? If you wouldn't eat it, you shouldn't put it on your skin. Again, you can use the guide from the Environmental Working Group called Skin Deep, so you can put your products in there and see what's in there. All our medications, these are mitochondrial toxins. Statins are given to everybody and their mother. The problem is they're good drugs, but only for certain people, and they're way overprescribed. Tylenol, again, one of the number one source of liver failure, other than sugar. Uh, and mold, again, 50 to 40 to 50 percent of buildings are water damaged. Both Dave and I have both had this problem, and it's scary, but there's stuff you can do about it. Alcohol, a little bit may be good, a little more may be bad. It's also something that we know is a toxin for the gut and the liver. Being sedentary, if you don't move, you can't actually mobilize your toxins. The toxins mostly are stored in our fat tissue. So when you exercise, you actually can release these toxins, you can actually stimulate your detox enzymes, and you can kind of repair your body. Yoga is great too because you twist and you turn and you stimulate your lymphatic circulation which flushes the toxins as well. Sleeping. Most of us are sleep deprived. Most of us don't get enough sleep. And the reason sleep is important is you, we recently discovered there's a whole system in your brain that's called the glymphatic system. Not lymphatic, but glymphatic. And at night, it actually works to clean your brain. And if you don't sleep enough or you don't have good quality sleep, you can't clean your brain and you start to age and you start to have brain dysfunction. So it's important to get a good night's sleep. Stress, also a huge factor for many of us. It's not something we can avoid per se if there's a lot of stress in our life, but it's how we respond to that stress. So stress is defined as the perception of a real or imagined stress to your body or your ego. So it could be you think your husband's having an affair, he's not, but you have the same physiological reaction as if a lion was chasing you. Your body doesn't know the difference. And we know that this has enormous harmful effects on our body. In fact, we know it shrinks your brain. It shrinks your brain, especially in the memory center, which causes dementia. So chronic stress has a huge effect. The good news is there are so many techniques to change that. Wim Hof talked to you about breathing. That is a powerful technique to reset your nervous system. He was able to learn from specific practices that came from ancient Tibet 
on how to regulate the system for himself, his autonomic nervous system, so that he can run up Mount Everest naked or swim under the ice. These are powerful tools that aren't just for people like women. They actually can be used by any one of us. So meditation is a powerful tool. It actually helps to increase stem cells, reduce inflammation in the brain, helps repair and heal your brain, helps increase your uh, anti-aging system to your body and detoxify. Water, also very important. Uh, we talked about that earlier here. Water is really key, and then filtering your water is key because there's average tap water has 38 wastewater contaminants in it. What do you think happens to all the women taking hormones or all the people taking drugs or antidepressants? Those go out your urine, they go into the sewer system, they get processed and they get returned to water. And we're drinking a lot of these things. You also don't want to be constipated. <laughs> think about it, what happens? You're eliminating waste, you're eliminating toxins through your liver. It dumps into your gut, that doesn't go well. You're in trouble. I mean, I, I once had a patient, uh, I said to her, um, so do you have regular bowel movements? She's like, yeah. I said, how often do you go? She's like, I go every week. I said, that's not regular. She says, it's regular for me, I go every week. <laughs> you should go once or twice a day or more because when you're, you're actually eating properly, when you're having plenty of plant foods, when you're having fiber, when you're drinking plenty of water, you actually can start to eliminate what's going on. And many people have gut issues in this country. And the reason we do is because we've altered our microbiome. This is the most important thing we can do to reset our bodies, is to actually optimize our gut flora through eating a healthy diet, plenty of fiber, and also taking magnesium, vitamin C, flax seeds, all these things can help fix this. And this is a fixable problem. Saunas, great way to detoxify your body. When you sweat, I call this the triple P system. Perspire, poop, and pee, right? And, and that actually is a good mnemonic to remember the things you have to do. So regular sweating, whether it's a sauna or vigorous exercise, again, helps you get rid of pesticides and heavy metals and toxins. Taking the right supplements also is very important. Some of us think we don't need supplements, but most of us do. And there are certain ones that help detoxify. The B vitamins in a multi, uh, things like N-acetylcysteine, lipoic acid, and vitamin C all help boost glutathione. These are simple things you can take to help optimize your system. And you can test you can get tested. I do this all in my practice. We can look for toxins, heavy metals. We can help you design a detox program. We have a center, the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts, and I run a big center and Cleveland Clinic as well. So think about this. If you want to live the life that you want to live, if you want to live with purpose, if you want to live and be fully expressed and love and connect and work and build your dreams, you have to deal with this. You have to understand that food is medicine, that we can minimize our exposure to toxins and live the life we all want. Thank you.